Okay, so today's speaker is Taylor Dupuy from the University of Vermont. He'll tell us about abelian varieties over finite fields in the LMFDB, which is a database of L functions, modular forms, and related items. Take it away. All right, uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to talk here. Um, so as Ravi already said, I'm gonna be talking about abelian varieties over finite fields in the LMFDB. And so um, this is joint work with a lot of people. Um, the database itself was made with uh, Karen Kudlaya, uh, David Rowe, and Christelle Vincent. And, um, and, and we, have a, we have another paper. So there's two papers that, that I posted in the Discord. Um, one is about uh, another uh, a counterexample that we found of a conjecture of Amadi and Sparlinski. Um, there is uh, an ongoing work, uh, an ongoing paper with uh, collaboration with uh, Karen Kalaya and David Zirk Brown about these things called angle ranks, which I may talk a little bit about. And then um, there is another project which we've had like three coding sprints for, for the database on, of isomorphism classes of ordinary abelian varieties, which I'm gonna say a little bit about. Um, and uh, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm just gonna start. Uh, so if you, and I put the link uh, to this in the database. So the database looks like, so you can go to the lmfdb.org. And uh, if you look at the bottom right, you can uh, peruse the database if you want. You can see that we, uh, you know, you can see that we computed a lot of inver isogeny invariants. And I just wanted to, you know, talk about this. So I'm gonna talk about the, the, uh, the isogeny classes first, okay? So, um, so we made a database of isogeny classes. Okay, so how is it, so for abelian varieties of our finite fields. So how is it that we do this? Um, so the way that we do this is, we don't really worry about isogeny classes of abelian varieties, but we're gonna use these things called Bay polynomials. So, um, and, and the, the reason that we can do this is because of the, the Honda Tate theorem, which says that these Bay polynomials are, are gonna be in bijection with, um, with isogeny classes of abelian varieties. And I'll say a little bit more about that, okay? So, um, so what are Vey polynomials? So to define them, I first need to define a Vey Q number. So a Vey Q number of weight W, so W here is an integer, is some algebraic number such that for every embedding into the, in, into the complex numbers, it's gonna have absolute value Q to the W divided by two, okay? So, um, uh, and then a, a, a Vey polynomial is of, of weight W is gonna be a polynomial, all of whose roots are Vey Q numbers, all right? Um, all right. And so uh, how do we get these Vey Q numbers? So, um, so if we have a smooth projective variety of dimension N, right? Um, well, we can take the ith cohomology, right? Where I is less than two N, uh, the ith l adic cohomology, and um, uh, so here for the uninitiated, this is the l adic cohomology, right? And so um, this is this crazy definition where we, we you know, uh, do this, uh, uh, you know, constant sheaf, and then we have to take this limit and then we tensor it up, okay? The de that definition is not so important. You can use other cohomologies to, to get the same thing. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and so you, you, we're using characteristic polynomials of the Frobenius on, on l adic cohomology. Right, and so the 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 big theorem is is that the the zeros of these polynomials are the VQ numbers, and so this is the Ramon hypothesis for varieties over finite fields, which round which was proved by Delin and uh, uh, it, and it rounded out the the Vey conjectures. Okay, so um, all right, so these are these VQ numbers. Um, it, for today, we're going to be talking about uh, abelian varieties. And so these are gonna be vague Q numbers most, okay, so, so one thing about the cohomology of abelian varieties, right, is that um, uh, their HIs are, are wedge powers of the H1 under cut product, that's an isomorphism. Um, the, the way to, if, if you wanna see this, like say with, with Betty cohomology, uh, one easy way to do this is to, to, to see a complex torus as uh, a bunch of circles, right, um, a product of circles and then use the Kunath formula. Um, so anyway, so the, the point here is that H1 knows all about or HI. And so we only need to really worry about H1. Um, one thing I should, I, I just want to mention in passing is that although we're building a database of abelian, like VQ numbers of abelian varieties, this applies 
much more generally, right? So um, there, so a, a, a vague Q number of weight one, right? If Q is equal to say some power of something, well, you can get different weights, right? By um, uh, uh, by there's an exchange between the power of Q and the um, uh, the the uh, the weight, right? So uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, anyway, so. Um, okay, so this all knows all about all other um, all the other uh, cohomologies, the H one, uh, and I just want to say what the eigenvalues are. So, so because I'm going to use this later. So, uh, typically, we're going to write this uh, characteristic polynomial as um, uh, the roots as alpha i, right? And they come in complex conjugate pairs, um, and uh, so so. Okay, so the eigenvalues for H2 using this formula are going to be the, the products of these two eigenvalues. And the, the eigenvalues for H3 are going to be products of three eigenvalues, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how this, this is going to work. So we really need the H1 uh, eigenvalues to, uh, to know about the, the higher eigenvalues. Okay, and this, this pattern continues. Okay, so there's even more that H1 knows, right? So this is the Honda Tate theorem. And, and this is what we're gonna use to, um, to use our isogeny classes. So if we have two abelian varieties, right, over a finite field, right? A is isogenous to a subabelian variety of B, if and only if the, 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 the characteristic polynomial of A divides the characteristic polynomial of B, right? So this is how we're going to determine what isogeny factors are. Um, another thing is is that is the formula for simple abelian varieties. So so for simple abelian varieties, um, what we're going to have is we're going to have an irreducible polynomial. So simple abelian varieties have a particularly easy form. They're not um, uh, irreducible polynomials, but the center of them is irreducible, right? So this is, it's like an irreducible to a power, and this power here is um, uh, the degree of the endomorphism algebra, okay? Um, and so what the, the, way that the, 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 the way that we generate the database is we produce these HAs and this EA, the, this exponent, right, can be read off from the, the Newton polygon of uh, the HA, right? In particular, uh, if you take the least common denominator of the slopes of the Newton polygon, right? That's going to be the E, okay? Um, uh, and, and so, so you can already see that we can start to read off lots of properties of, of the uh, isogeny class of abelian variety just from uh, these polynomials, okay? So, um, uh, uh, so conversely, you know, like every VQ polynomial appears as some HA for some abelian variety. All right. Okay, so what are some questions that we could ask once we produce this, this, uh, this, uh, you know, these things, right? So, so first is how do we tabulate all of these Bay polynomials? So what, what's the algorithm for doing this? I could give a talk entirely on this. I'm not going to. Um, I have given a talk on it, but I think we're not going to address this. But um, so actually, the original algorithm we used is. Um, uh, was done by Kiran Kedlaya in 2007. And um, in, it was uh, David Rowe worked on it as an undergraduate research project, which is kind of interesting. And there's actually a joint paper. So I, I, I knew Timothy Abbott, the guy who started Zulip's name was familiar, but it turns out Timothy Abbott was also an undergraduate at MIT with David Rowe. And the three of them have a joint paper on this topic, right? So um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, okay, so other questions we could ask. How many isogeny classes did we compute, right? Um, so there's this thing about angle ranks and there's a conjecture that we just proved uh, and we found, so the conjecture is that, so there's an angle rank. Angle rank is an invariant that is, the, for me, it was the, it was the reason I wanted to make the database. And, um, and so the angle rank is a measure of multiplicative relations between eigenvalues of the Frobenius, right? And, um, and so it's, it's an invariant in between zero and G. And the lower it is, the more uh, relations you have 
between um, multiplicative relations you have between uh, uh, Frobenius eigenvalues. Um, okay, they so maybe I should back up, but they conjectured that um, uh, Jacobians, which are ordinary and uh, 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 geometrically simple, right, are uh, ha have maximal angle rank, and we found an explicit counterexample in some relations that, that show that this isn't true. Um, okay, th then the other thing that we could ask is what are the arithmetic statistics? So what are the interesting arithmetic statistics we could look at? And, um, and then but, but how- are, are, are you gonna say something about some of these? Um... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do everything except for the, the first one, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about arithmetic statistics. Uh, so, um, so one thing that we could talk about is Galois groups. Right, uh, we could talk about Newton polygons, right? We could talk about um, point counts and zeta functions, and that's going to lead into this kind of Sato Tate stuff. Um, and then another interesting thing you look at is whether uh, about maximality. The, the so which which isogeny classes have the most points, which have the least points in the simple and non-simple cases, right? Um, things you could you, you could also um, uh, you, you can see which endomorphism algebras appear. And uh, so we can compute the Brouwer invariance. And other, other thing, the other thing is the, this angle rank stuff. So I'm going to start with um, the Newton polygons, right? So I need the Newton polygons first to, to say some stuff about ordinarity. So let me just remind people how, how Newton polygons work. So there's two parts of a Newton polygon, right? So there's the slopes and then there's the lengths of the slopes, right? And so the slopes are essentially the p-adic valuations of the roots, right? So it's just a set, but it's normalized so that Q, if you have an abelian variety over FQ, it, that has, that has a, a valuation one. And then the length is the number of roots, roots with slope. So it shouldn't be SI, it should just be S. It's the number of roots with a particular slope, okay? And so, um, uh, so here is an example of what's called an ordinary uh, uh, Newton polygon for, it, for a threefold, right? It's just uh, you know, three zeros and then a, a bunch of them, uh, three of them of slope one. All of the Newton polygons will lie above this and the ones that are, are, are not ordinary are, are you know, and, and if they're not this one, so this is what's called the Hodge polygon, uh, they are, they're called not ordinary and it just goes up like so. Right, so here's all the, the Newton polygons for threefolds. Okay, so and once you get to this vertical line here, it's super singular, and all the slopes are exactly one half. All right, so I'm now going to say a little bit about how we compute um, uh, isomorphism classes. Okay, so what is the procedure that we're using for computing isomorphism classes of abelian varieties? Okay, so. So there's a, a, a theorem of Deligne from 1969 that gives an equivalence of categories for ordinary abelian varieties to the category of Deligne modules, right? And um, so this is the category of ordinary abelian varieties. Morphisms are, are morphisms of uh, abelian groups, right? So, um, so how do we produce a Deligne module? What is a Deligne module? So it's some linear algebraic thing that is gonna allow us to encode ordinary abelian varieties. And it's done in a couple steps, right? So, uh, so first, um, uh, so we need an we, we need to input an ordinary abelian variety. Okay. Uh, the next thing we do, so is is we are uh, going to take its canonical lift, and this is where the ordinarity hypothesis comes in, right? So there are other theories of uh, of, of of lifts. Like mu ordinarity, but um, uh, I, I mean, and I, I, it doesn't work. Uh, so I, I actually I don't know in what generality you can do this, but um, this this is why we need this. Uh, but it would be interesting if if people had comments about uh, what other types of canonical lifts you can do uh, to 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 you know maybe make an improved category of the lean modules that gets you outside of the ordinary case. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose an embedding of. Uh, the width vectors over FQ into the complex numbers to get a complex abelian variety, right? And um, what we're going to do then is we're, we're going to take the singular cohomology of this abelian variety, right? Uh, of the, of, the, uh, of the, uh, the, the canonical left embedded into C. 
and this is the delete module here, right? Um, and so, so what you do is you have this thing and then you just kind of characterize it as um, uh, a, 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 a free module, a free Z module, which has a Frobenius and a Verschiebung, an F and a V, and they satisfy certain axioms, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, and so, so, so this is the, the object that you get. Okay, so this is kind of unwieldy for the purposes of making a database, right? And so what we want to do is we want to, to have some way of practically computing all of these Deline modules. And uh, so this was started by, so both Everett Howe in the 90s and uh, Stefano Marsiglia in 2000, I think 17-ish. Uh, so Taylor, it's a good question uh, that Arnav should ask. I'll, I'll read it out. Oh, yeah. Uh, wh why did you go to the complex numbers? Could, could you not define this cohomology group over ZP or like something previously? Was it just to have Z rather than at Z? You could, if you did it with ZP, if you did it with ZP coefficients, you can still tensor. So this thing, if you tensor it up to ZL, uh, compares with the Tate module, right? So uh, yeah. And so I, and I think if you do it with ZP, you get the P divisible group, but I'm not 100% sure. But the, the proof of the equivalence definitely goes through Tate's theorem and the Honda Tate theorem. Right, so uh -huh. it goes. The, the, and the Tate's theorem is is that uh, isogenies are are uh, are morphisms of the Tate module. Right. 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 So yeah, um, yeah, and well, you'll see why we don't want to go over to ZP now, right? So what we'll do is we we can actually recognize them as uh, so. Let's let's just work in the simple case so that this is a field, right? If it's not the simple case, you need to work with like a tall fractional ideals and a tall algebras. Which is just like products of fields, right? Um, but uh, so here, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take. Uh, I thought I disabled that anyway. So um, so okay. So here's something that's interesting, right? Is that these Deline modules, once you put them in bijection with fractional ideals, they have a, a monoid structure. I don't know what's going on with that, right? Um, okay, and uh, so let me just kind of show you what's going on. So they're going to have a Frobenius and they're going to have a Verschiebung. So the Frobenius is just going to be pi, multiplication by pi. And the Verschiebung is going to be multiplication by Q divided by pi. OK? Um, so what other things that you have? Like the endomorphism. So morphisms of, uh, of abelian varieties are going to be, so isogenies of two things of the, uh, of the same dimension in, in, uh, over the same uh, field FQ. Uh, so those are going to be the colon ideal, right? So it's interesting that the colon ideal also produces a fractional ideal, which which produces um, yet uh, a, a, another abelian variety. Apparently. What's the colon ideal? Remind so the colon ideal is the set of things in the field that multiply i into j, right? So yeah. Um, Yeah, I colon I is going to be the endomorphism algebra. Oh, endomorphism ring now, endomorphism ring. So you can compute endomorphism rings this way. Not all fractional ideals are invertible, right? Um, so uh, that, so that, that depends on whether the order that you're working with is Gorenstein or not. And so you get into issues with this. And so uh, this is kind of where we're going with the, um, with the isomorphism classes for ordinary abelian varieties. And I'm just going to leave that now and, and go back to the isogeny classes. Okay, so um, uh, so here are uh, so what are some arithmetic statistics? And then and now you can people always ask, am I writing this at the same time? I'm definitely not. Right? You can see that I just kind of did that all at the same time. So <laughs> um, so anyway, um, uh, so uh, so what do I want to say? So um, so one thing we can do is we can talk about Newton polygons. I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna skip this one because I I think we're gonna run out of time, but. Um, uh, let me just say briefly, like we can enumerate Newton polygons, and based on the 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 strata, you can see that you know the the ordinary one has you know the most as you'd expect stuff like that. So, um, so what else do we have? Okay, so uh, the other thing that I want to talk about was uh, I want to say a little bit about is we can compute the Galois groups of the Vey polynomial in characteristic zero, right? Um, uh, so this has a little bit to do with the Vial group of the connected component of the 
uh, the l attic monodromy group. Um, uh, but OK, so, so one of the things is, anyway, that's kind of beside the point right now. Uh, what, what I want to say is that we can compute what these groups are. The most prevalent one is, are these 6T11 ones, right? This is the vial group of SP2G, right? Which is, um, you know, C, so it's like C2 to the G, semi-direct product um, SG. So it's a symmetric group acting on F2 to the G by permutations, right? Actin sequencing. Uh huh? Did someone say something? Maybe I'll say something, which is uh, uh, like there's a lot to unpack in things you're saying right here. Like what, where, why these vial groups come up? What's like there's like a yeah yeah yeah. I mean, the, 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 so, so yeah. So um, so one thing that I was mostly interested in was was okay. So which ones occur? Which why? Right. That's a good question, right? And so um, one thing that you could look at is like what percentage of the time they do, what, 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 how often they appear, right? And so. Um, you could you could wonder if they follow some sort of Mala thing. So Mala's Mala's conjecture says that if you fix a, 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 a number field of degree d, right, and you you look at um, uh, uh, the ones with a particular Galois group, and you look at the ones bounded uh, uh, with discriminant less than x, right, this should go like x to some constant a g, right. Uh, by fiddling with this, right, you can you can figure out like what proportion of these, um, or what what the Mala constant should be, in 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 uh, in the in, in our case, and it turns out that these don't agree with these Mala things at all, right? So so these the 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 way that these things appear, right? Um, uh, 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 it, it doesn't follow Mala, so that's kind of like an open open deal. Um, so what else do I want to say about Galois groups? Okay. So one thing that I wanted to say is how, one thing we can ask is how the Galois groups in Newton polygon are constrained with each other, right? Um, uh, so, uh, okay, so it turns out that there's, there's three important invariants. There's the angle rank, there's the Newton polygon, and then there's these Galois groups, right? And say in dimension three, you, you could wonder if they're all, if, if, if any combination of these things can appear, right? Is there any constraints that happen, right? Um, so it turns out that in the super singular case, you're going to be forced to be angle rank zero. So I'm going to throw this one out. Angle rank again is 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 in between zero and g, right? And so if if these combinations were completely random, right? The the Galois group, the Newton polygon, and the angle rank, you'd expect there to be like 50 possible combinations for threefolds that that could possibly appear in our database, right? Um, uh, or sorry, 50, 80, right? So you have uh, uh, four possible angle ranks, four possible Newton polygons, and five possible Galois groups. So, right? so have, you, have you defined angle rank? I've lost track. No, I haven't. I, I, so angle rank is this thing that measures uh, the, the, the relations between Fermi-Fermi's eigenvalues. Um, I, I'm going to do that at the end. Um, but what I want to say is that this doesn't happen. There's actually 15 possible combinations. So they're very constrained, right? And, uh, and actually, for a while, you, you get, we were wondering whether or not the Newton polygon in the Galois group uh, determine uh, the, the angle rank. But you can see in this table, right, uh, that uh, the, the, if you look at the second and third row, right, you see that there's angle rank one and angle rank three. So, it turn, so when, we, when, we, when we actually submitted the paper, we didn't know what was going on. Now we know a little bit more. And we know that um, the thing that the, there's a subtle thing going on is, is that you have to consider the way that the, the Galois group acts on the Newton polygon. And there's different permutation representations that, that, that are critical to what's going on. So you, you, you need to know not only the permutation representation, but how it interacts with the Newton polygon. Once you have that information, then then using some results of David's Duina, um, you, uh, uh, you, can, you can prove that, um, that the, the Newton polygon and the Galois group, when they're coupled properly, work together. So, so um, yeah, so this, this slide's a little bit out of date. But, um, but I mean, we didn't know at the time, and now we know a little bit. And so that, that's with uh, the type of stuff I'm doing with uh, Karen Kadlaya and, uh, and David Zirk Brown. 
Okay, so uh, okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, point counts. So, in so, so Taylor, I wonder whether, yeah. like, in this last bit, there are a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff that I imagine while there are questions in chat. I think that any one of these, there are lots of interesting questions people want to ask you. I don't know. We should be slowing you down and. I mean, go for it. I mean, um, I mean, the whole the whole thing is like there's the whole paper is just like a slew of questions, right? So if you go through. Like but, we, but, I think, I think, but I think we have questions for you. I mean, you oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, go, go for it. <laughs> uh, well, I think, okay, maybe I'll just, okay, well, I, I guess one thing has to do with the angle range. There's a bunch of, Will and Arnold both have things I want to ask, but or, or I, want to, I want to hear answers. So maybe I, 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 I can just go to the angle rank slide here. Sure. I mean, so, I mean, you shouldn't see how many slides there are. Mostly of them are animations, but uh, where is this one? Um, uh, here. So this is the definition of the angle rank here. Right, so um, yeah, so what you do is you take the eigenvalues, right? And then you take the angles and then you, you, you take the Q span of them. And because the argument is not well-defined, right? You, you take, um, uh, you know, you take, uh, so what do I, so you adjoin one and then you subtract one, right? right. So, um, so, I mean, so, so this is the dimension of the Frobenius tor. Will this is Will's? I mean, yes, it is the dimension of the Frobenius tor. That is, that is, that is true. That is the dimension of the Frobenius torus. Yes. Yeah, 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 And, and, um, yeah, and so the group generated by um, the uh, is that Will Chen or which Will? It's like Will Salon. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's the dimension of the Frobenius torus, and so the the multiplicative group uh, generated by the roots is uh, the the character the character group of the Frobenius torus. So if I were gonna do this, so this vector space is almost the character group for the Frobenius torus. Yeah. So, so but, maybe, uh, oh, great. So, so maybe you want you to go back to where you were unless other people want to jump yeah. in, they want to derail you. Uh, but I, so that was helpful for me. I feel much better knowing what that. Means. Okay, so where am I? Now I see why it's an integer that's no bigger than the number of. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, so where am I now? Uh, we did this, we did these, we did that. Okay, so we're gonna do Sato Tate now, or the Nato Tate, right? So, uh, so, okay, so, so, so let me just remind you about this long Vey estimates, okay? So, um, okay, so, so if you have a, a, a variety over FQ, which is projective, geometrically irreducible, smooth of dimension D, right? Then the number of FQ points, so this shouldn't be as Q to go to, goes to infinity. Actually, you just have an inequality here. So there's a, there's a constant that, that, that bounds these things. Anyway, um, so the, the main point is, is that the number of FQ points of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a variety of dimension D is like Q to the D, right? And so the thing that you can consider, right, that you do in this Sato Tate business, right, is that you consider the error, right? And then you look at the statistics of the error, right? So you look at um, uh, this, this error here, and then as you vary over isogeny classes for a fixed Q in G, so G being the dimension, right, you can see what happens, right? So how do these errors vary as we vary over isogeny classes? So one thing that you could maybe guess is that, okay, we're just gonna get the Sato Tate distribution again, right? That might be what you'd expect. That's, that's actually not what happens, right? So in this particular case, we're gonna do this for an abelian variety, okay? And, uh, and so Drew, oh, let me go back. Okay, so Drew has these pictures, right, that he draws. So this is for an elliptic curve where he looks at these in families, right? And so these just need to be, they can either be a geometric family or an arithmetic family. And then he reduces it mod P and then computes the statistic and then averages them Right and, and or, or puts them in buckets and, and gets gets these the semicircle distribution. Okay, so in our case, you can like so so if we did isogeny classes instead, what would the distribution look like? Right. So here's what we get. Oh, does it start automatically? I forget. This is a much less important point, but do you want to move your mouse cursor from the middle of the screen? Oh man, I did, oh you're on this one here. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Oh my bad. I I just thought you were looking at the other one. My bad. Where it's is really, it? It's really annoying. I hate when people do that. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. So uh, this one here, if we just did it for isogeny classes, right, it, it goes just to the uniform distribution. Why does it go to the uniform distribution? Well, you know, uh, the, the trace, the, 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 the point count is just determined by this AP. And this AP can only be so many numbers. And so it's just, you know, constant, right? So um, yeah, so this one goes to the uniform distribution. Um, uh, Okay, what, what about for, for, for uh, the g is equal to two case, right? right. Um, so uh, they get the, uh, uh, kind of, um, I don't know what you'd call this distribution. Um, <laughs> I actually don't know the name of this one. Uh, well, I mean, it's the, it's the trace distribution for uh, USP2G is the generic distribution for, um, for, for uh, abelian varieties, right? But when we do ours, right, this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting, is um, we're gonna get something that's much more um, triangular and lower, right? And, the, and you, so the moments are written at the bottom here, and this is what you can use to, to, to see that these things are gonna be different. Also, the way that these converge, I don't know how this works, but the convergence is always lopsided to one side, right? And the numbers are bigger on 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 uh, on the right, for some reason. So like they they get more extreme. Okay, so um, so one thing that I did is uh, and, and you have and you have no clue why why they're lopsided. I don't know why they're lopsided, right? I do have a clue why these distributions are these distributions, and we have a we have some formulas for them, right? So. Um, but one thing I, I do want to point out for can people- Can you predict in which direction they're going to be lopsided? Like for- Yeah, so the tip is always yeah. to the left, it seems. And okay. then there's, they, they go farther out on the right, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. So one thing that I wanted to say about comparing our statistics to Drew's, ours was for point counts of abelian varieties. Drew's was for point counts of curves, right? And so is it fair that I'm even allowed to compare these two things? Right, so there's these two issues, right? And I just, I guess we're gonna run out of time, but I, I just wanna say that they, they are, it is fair to do this. Um, so in, in Drew's, right, he uses curves. In ours, we use the, the point counts of the abelian variety, right? Why are these two things the same? It's not true that if you have a maximal curve, right, that, that uh, it's Jacobian is gonna be maximal, right? So the, 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 the point counts of the abelian variety and the points counts of the curve don't really, I mean, they have some things in common, but not so much. And the point is, is that, okay, so the point is, is that you have to do kind of a tricky computation. And I'm, I'm just gonna skip this computation. But there's, you could, if you're just a little bit clever with uh, how you compute, you can see that you're gonna get the, the same statistics. So um, let me just do, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna run through this. Because we're running low. Okay. But this is just a, a, a silly computation, right? But I, 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 yeah. All right. Anyway, the, the point is, is that the, the, the error terms agree up to a, a small, a vanishingly small factor. And so you can, it makes sense to compare these two statistics. Okay. So, okay, so, um, so we can do this for, you know, we can do this for three. Uh, maybe we'll do this one later. So we can do this for three, we can do it for four, right? So I, we don't need to show all these videos. You get the same thing, you'll get some distributions. And then maybe I'll show four later or something. Okay, so one thing that I do want to talk about is how many isogeny classes were we expect to get. So for a fixed Q and a fixed G, uh, uh, how do we compute isogeny classes? And this is going to play into how this is going to this method is going to relate to how we get these these uh, Sato ain't distributions or these not o tate. So uh, these these distributions that are not the Sato tate distributions. Okay, so um, you is know, there a difference between the two? The Sato, no, no, no. We oh, we okay. actually we okay. okay. So the story is is like we thought it was really I, I thought it was fun, really funny to call it a Sato ain't distribution. We put it in the paper, and then there was some debate as to whether we would call them Sato tates or Nato 
uh, or what is it, Sato Aints or Nato Tates. And then <laughs> after like a month or so, it got pretty obnoxious and then <laughs> we took it out. So uh, we just called them isogeny Sato Tate distributions. Um, okay, so you can see that the, 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 as, you, as you increase Q, right, the number of isogeny classes essentially grows. Uh, so log of the number of isogeny classes and log Q essentially grows linearly, right? And there, we can actually have, we actually have a formula for the number of isogeny classes, right? And it's this formula. So this is approximately the formula. And this comes from the volume of uh, a certain region, right? And so this, this is a formula of de Pippo and Howe, right? Everett Howe, uh, for computing the number of isogeny classes. And I wanna say a little bit about how this, where this formula comes from. Um, okay. So uh, also, I just want to show how accurate this formula formula is. So there, there's a formula for or, the ordinary case, and there's a, there's the formula for um, the if you don't restrict do this ordinary hypothesis, and you can see that the the uh, that these these formulas are are pretty accurate. Okay, so um, all right, then this is some fitting of the lines, right? So the lines are are also really good. Right, so this is where the lines come from. Is you just take log of that formula, and and uh, and you can figure out what those um, uh, you know uh, what those constants are. Okay, so the way that so so the way that these these uh, polynomials are are actually computed is what we first do is we take the roots and we're going to normalize them, right, so that they're root unitary, so that they're on the unit circle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the trace of the roots. So you're going to take, so once you have a root, a, a polynomial with roots on the unit circle, you do alpha plus alpha bar to get a new polynomial. And it turns out that these polynomials are in bijection with our original polynomials, right? So our, our, our VE polynomials. And its roots will be in between minus two and two, and I have all real roots, okay? And so we want to parametrize uh, those, those Q bar roots, right? So Again, the first step is to, we take our, our general uh, VE polynomial and we're gonna make it root unitary. And then what we do is we take this root unitary polynomial and we turn it into this thing which has roots uh, in between minus two and two, okay? Um, and what we're gonna do is, okay, after we do this, we're gonna get so many, um, uh, we're, we're gonna get so many uh, polynomials. So, the, the coefficients of these polynomials are going to be bounded in a certain way. Okay, so, so yeah, this thing is, is, is given by a volume, as I said before. And now I'm going to kind of show you what, the, what this region looks like. Okay, so here I've taken this, this thing with all real roots, right? So I've taken R1 and R2, right? And, and I'm just going, this is going to parametrize the, the polynomials with real roots in, in two variables. And then after the, the composition of those two things, I'm going to get uh, so a, a, a region, right, that, that gives me the coefficients of the, the polynomial. Um, uh, yeah, so the, um, uh, the, this Q polynomial, okay? And, uh, and so this, since, and, and this is the volume of the region that, that we take uh, uh, to, uh, so we take, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna compute the, the volume of uh, the, the region on the right-hand side in order to get that estimate, right? And this is kind of like the starting point for the, the distribution, right? So for the Sauter Tate distribution. So, okay, so this is just a repetition of, of what I've already said. So, so, we, it, so yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so the uh, so again, we're trying to compute the volume of this other region. So this is like the chevron region that that that, that parametrize those polynomials, and what we do is we use the map here, that, that map phi that I was talking about, and it turns out that uh, that this thing turns out to be a Vandermont like matrix, and uh, uh, you know, and and that that allows you to 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 write this out. So. Uh, to, to, to do this computation. Um, all right, okay, and so, um, 
So the, the, these, these other distributions, these not rotates, comes from looking at uh, slicing. So uh, of, of, of these, uh, these, the, of uh, these regions. So we, we really need to look at one of the coefficients that gives the, the trace. Okay, and so after, you know, uh, <clears throat> so I guess doing this procedure, we can, we can uh, end up computing um, uh, a distribution and we have formulas for it. And it, it fits pretty well, right? I mean, it, I mean, it is the, uh, I guess we don't have a proof that it is, right? So. Uh, uh, that this is the, the limiting distribution. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I guess, uh, in the, I guess Frank Caligari emailed us and he said that these should be Jacobi ensembles, right? So the, the distributions for these, and I don't know much about that. So, uh, I, I, and he says that the van der Bond matrix is, uh, I appears. I have no idea what that means. Jacobi Neither do I. So, uh, I mean, so apparently there's matrix ensembles where the Vandermond matrix appears, right? And, and his guess was that uh, these things should be those. And the other thing that we do know is that the limit of these are going to be Gaussian. So as you crank up G, right, it's going to be Gaussian. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And so we have some other pictures for other distributions and, uh, you know, for, for higher Q, maybe we can do this one. And here's, here's, you can really see the lopsidedness here. But it's supposed to converge to the other one. And we have explicit formulas, right, for, for what these, these, uh, these distributions are. Uh, yeah, and so this is the computation of the moments, right? So, um, and, and so, uh, yeah, so these are, these are the even moments for the, these distributions. Okay, so um, uh, this is what I talked about. So, so uh, this is the angle rank thing. So, so I, I already defined the angle rank, but uh, now we're going to start talking about the angle rank. So, um, so now I'm going to talk about uh, this this conjecture of Amadi and Sparlinsky um, about this the angle rank. So, there's this angle rank here. So, this is what we defined. So, this is this numbering between zero and one. And it measures multiplicative relations between the uh, the Frobenius eigenvalues, right? And or or if you want, it's the the um, uh, dimension of the uh, of the characters of the Frobenius tori, right? And so yeah, so you just add one and throw out one because the branch is not well defined. Okay. And so um, so what are some basic facts about this, right? Um, so. You know, since the complex conjugates are also roots, right? Uh, we know that the the uh, uh, that we're going to have two G. So so uh, this cuts down the the dimension of this by half. So we're going to get a de dependence relation. So at most uh, you can have this to be G, right? Um, in the super singular case, uh, it turns out that that it, and I said this before that it's super singular if and only if. Um, the slopes are all one half, if and only if uh, the angle rank is, is zero, right? Because you're essentially getting a bunch of roots of unity, right? And so, um, yeah, and, and so those, those have a rational argument, and so those don't contribute anything. Okay, so um, what else do we have here? I mean, the other things that bound it, for example, the endomorphism algebra, since you're raising to a power, right? You're going to have less roots. That's an easy one. Another thing is that, that, that this invariant is this thing is invariant under base change, right? So um, uh, yeah. So uh, so maybe I can say a little bit about this. So once you base change, uh, if you base change, and this is really easy. Is it if you, if you just base change a, a characteristic polynomial or, or, or abelian variety, right? Um, all you do is raise the the uh, the the Frobenius eigenvalues to a power, and this actually can be computed quickly using resultants, right? Um, uh, uh, you do the resultant with you know t to the n minus one, right? Or t to the n minus x, I guess, because if you want to, uh, you have to eliminate a variable. So um, anyway, uh, so since you're raising it to a power, right? 
you should just think of like this, you should think of this thing as just kind of like taking log of those multiplicative relations between the roots. So you, um, all right. So, okay, so what was the conjecture? And I, I mentioned this previously. Uh, the conjecture was that, um, uh, that uh, so if you take a Jacobian of a curve over a finite field, right, which is ordinary, right, and uh, geometrically simple, right, then they conjectured that it would have angle rank uh, equal to G, right? And so this turns out to be false and be by a, an explicit counterexample. So I should say a little bit about how we, we tabulated these. So we have three ways of, of computing uh, angle ranks now, right? The first way we did it was using LLL, right? To, 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 we took the roots and then we found relations among them. Um, a second way we did it was, um, was, was a trick using, uh, for producing polynomials which had uh, products of roots. And this one was kind of really bad uh, in, in kind of removing cyclotomic parts. And so that's not very computationally efficient. Oh, we actually have four ways. Uh, that we now have another way, which is uh, a uh, we had another theoretical way of doing it using this uh, Zwina uh, result. And then there's a fourth way using, um, uh, using S units, right? So, uh, but the S units one has a bottleneck in, um, and I forget what the bottleneck is. It's not computing the splitting field, but uh, Maybe it is computing the S units. I forget what the bottleneck was there. Anyway, um, so one of the, so so this is so if we look at this explicit uh, uh, abelian variety or this isogeny class, right, um, with this L polynomial. So the L polynomial is the determinant the where you do one minus t times the identity minus t times the Frobenius, not t times. So it's like the flipped version of the characteristic polynomial, right? So um, it turns out that that uh, that there, this one is uh, hyperliptic. Um, uh, so it's a hyperliptic Jacobian or it's, it's uh, isogenous to a hyperliptic Jacobian. And, uh, and, it, it's ang and, and we can write its roots like so, right? And we can, we'll, we'll be able to write down an, an explicit relation, right? So, you know, uh, so there's non-conjugate roots so that this relation is satisfied. In, in this in this setting, and so once you have a relation among the roots like this, then you uh, you 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 get uh, you know it bumps down the angle rank by one. So the more relations, right, the the, the smaller the angle rank. This is in particularly interesting, right? The, these relations because okay, relations among eigenvalues are really relations among eigenvectors, and if you just have a bunch of eigenvectors, right, which are say a root of unity, uh, they look like, uh, um, uh, you know, they, they end up multiplying to a root of unity. These are uh, uh, Tate classes, right? And so, uh, and so this angle rank is really measuring uh, whether you, there exists exotic Tate classes on products of abelian varieties. Uh, yeah. And so that's, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, so uh, if you guys have questions, I can, uh, I'd be happy to address them. Great, let's say uh, we can uh, unmute or